Okay, this is a little practical demonstration of a Capture Program Sequence Generator Pro. Um, a little tour of the features. This is during an imaging session. This is just a screen grab on a remote machine. Um, this is the filter. Filter set is an electronic filter wheel. Frame and focus, that's to arrive at your object. Um, telescope markers, we'll come to that later. Just a histogram. Focus control, I have an electronic focuser and it does have an auto focus routine which will be invoked at the end of this sub that's about to come in. And this is part of the plate solve um, procedure. Now, the whole point about Sequence Generator Pro is that you can um, design a sequence of images and targets and effectively just program the computer to control the telescope to do it without technically your own involvement in it other than monitoring what's happened but if you want to go to bed theoretically that's possible it takes a bit of getting used to and you learn fast learn that garbage in garbage out this program's only as strong as your skills in making sure that everything all these boxes are filled in but it's not that difficult either um, and certainly once you start using the program and discover um, some of the things about the way it can work in practice it encourages you to carry on um, this little thing up here is just showing the sequence. The particular target I'm working on now is pretty much overhead at this light polluted location. It's a fireworks galaxy and I've been working on that for some time. Um, I basically just went from a galaxy in Pegasus over to here and it was done automatically by the program. And you can see this is an image um, I took some days ago, a highly stretched one, and it plate solved and arrived virtually right on the button. Um, I've not nudged the telescope um, over there. Nope, that's all done by the computer and by a plate solve program called Plate Solve 2, which comes as part of the Sequence Generator Pro package, which is a really good deal, a very effective plate solve program. Um, it's also basically talking to PhD guiding. There you have my PhD guiding graph. Um, so it's all happening there. Yes, it is. And not too bad guiding tonight. And this is the download of a 10 minute sub. It's in blue, so you can't see very much. Um, it stopped the guiding now because it's gonna run a dither. But first of all, I asked it to auto focus. Um, and I suspect I'm probably out of focus now. So the program has swapped the filter over from blue um, to a luminance filter. And now it's gonna take a sequence of pictures at various points of the focuser range. So I've set a step size about 120. It's pushed the focuser out over to here. And now it's gonna take about eight second subs, I think, and gonna measure the star diameter. So, okay, so it's pushed the focuser way out. And as you can see, the star's badly out of focus. It's measuring the diameter and it arrives at a figure and it plots it there. The aim of this is to produce what's called a V curve. Um, so basically the program can look at what's happening and it should go something like that and at the bottom of there Should be where our best focus is and it's really the line of the two in out focus points It's encouraging watching all this to see when it actually does work. In, in practice, it sometimes gets the right number and sometimes doesn't. If it makes an error, it always makes an error slightly inside the proper point of focus rather than outside, which is an interesting observation itself. But I experiment with step sizes and, and exposures and stuff, and I'm trying um, trialling a new step size, which is about 120, which is quite high. The aim being to give it a very, very deep V-curve. Okay, that's a really, really nice line up there. Though. So it's a nice straight line. And if we could get something similar on this other side, I think we'd probably get a very reliable focus. The focus is going to be around the 1700 mark. But since the telescope is slewed from one hemisphere to the other, and I'm using a 14-inch McCasser grain, I fully expect the mirror to a slightly shifted position. So I'd probably be surprised if it was actually 1700, but it's going to be somewhere around that mark. I 
And as you can see, we've gone through best focus now, so the stars will start to enlarge, which is pretty good. We see fewer stars. You can look at this information box, and obviously the more out of focus you get, the less stars uh, that are identified. So yeah, it's gone down from 36 to 25, and this is the diameter, the radius of the stars. It's very high there, gets very low there, and starts to get high again. So this V-curve is actually looking a really nice shaped V-curve. So fingers crossed it ends up with a decent, um, a decent focus. Okay, so it's ended up at 1686, um, which I think is probably quite a reliable um, measurement. Um, my C14 is a 2003 model, and it's a very, very good telescope. It's the best telescope I've ever owned. Um, it's a really nice piece of work, and it doesn't have much mirror flop. It doesn't have much focus shift. All right, so that's the focus over. Um, as you see, we've actually focused on target. I've not slowed away to bright star. It's actually used the stars around the fireworks galaxy. The other thing that's happening now is it's going back to set the blue filter because, of course, we were on a, um, a run on the blue filter. But what about the guider? Well, the guider is being told to get back to work. Guider resumed, OK, which is encouraging. And now what's the program is waiting for the auto guider to settle down. OK, it's settling down by a measured distance. Anything below 0.8 of a pixel for 15 seconds is the setting I use. And if it survives without going any higher than 0.8, the auto guider will basically spark up and the sequence will start again. And there we are. A final check by the program that PhD is guiding properly. The program is happy, everything's right, the autofocus has been run, um, the auto guider is now working and it's settled down, and there we are, we're resuming. So there you are, that sequence generator pro in a nutshell.